Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Animation Pilgrimage. Uh, this is Tennille and Sean. Hello. <laughs> we just watched uh, Momotaro's Divine Sea Warriors. Yep. It is a Japanese propaganda film from right in the heart of World War II. So, as you can imagine, <laughs> it uh, paints itself the country of Japan in a very high light and mm. makes fun of other countries, specifically Americans. But even then, I gotta say, it really didn't... This is one of those... Uh, I guess there's different kinds of propaganda films. Yeah. There are uh, the two major kinds of propaganda films. One, uh, where it paints the opposing side or group or something in a very bad light and makes fun of them in terrible ways and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And the other kind of... De- uh, <laughs> the other kind of propaganda film uh, paints... The, itself. Itself, the good side, yeah. quotes, mm-hmm. uh, in very good it's light. perfect and, and amazing and great. Yeah. And this is definitely more so Which are very damaging in two different v- ways. Damaging in very different ways. And this is definitely that second one. Mm-hmm. Wholeheartedly. Oh, yeah. Uh... So I'm, uh, I'm just gonna guess that a lot of people have not watched this film. A lot of people have probably heard about it. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you're into any kind of animation history, you've probably heard about this movie because it is Japan's first animated film. Yep. So, you know, now we're gonna be seeing Japan enter the fray of animated films, but I mean. Sort give, of. It gives them a bit. Yeah, <laughs> they, they need to of, recover after this one. <laughs> yeah, they kind of uh, do this and then lose the war. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to take them a little bit to, you know, get back to animation. Right. But I will say, like, um, as far as, like, their country's first animated film, this looks good. Yeah, it's reasonable. It looks better than China's. <laughs> oh, rip, Princess Iron fan. Yeah, and honestly, there is a segment in here mm-hmm. that looks really well done. Oh, well, there were several segments that I thought, it's like, that was some nice animation right there. Like, I, I specifically meaning, like, the one that's talking about Britain's colonization of part of the Philippines. Okay. <laughs> And it's all done in silhouettes, and it almost looks like we're back watching Prince Ahmed again. Right. It feels like it took inspiration from that. And yeah. It's I like, have no I, idea if they would have had... I'd love to uh, know if that was the case. Yeah, if they actually had seen Prince Ahmed and were trying to make allusions to it, or... Right, because it almost it feels like too much of a coincidence for it. Yeah, it's like not all to be. black silhouettes with rotoscope, and... Mm-hmm. It... It looks really good. It looks okay. Compared to everything else in this? Okay, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, it's definitely not like Disney level or anything, but it's better than anything else that's shown in this film. I will say that this is very much an unintended meaning that comes through decades later of <laughs> watching back this film. Yeah. You can watch this film today and just take it as a theme, like all of its themes on the horrors of colonialization. Yeah. Colonialization? Colonialism, colonization. Colonization, yes. Either way, yeah. So you can take this on any group of uh, colonizing people, uh, enslaving the locals and uh, teaching them your ways by force. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so yeah. you know what Americans what's, what's weird is that this movie does have that theme mm-hmm. because like you said in the black and white or, or the silhouette part of the movie where it's, it's showing Britain coming over to the islands and, and being like we're there this is evil yeah except earlier in the same film they're showing Japan doing that to the locals as well, but it's shown in the good way. Right. It's like, oh, look, the locals are so happy Japan is there. They're so happy to work 
in the dirt and mud and sing happy work songs as they chop down their forests and build homes for the Japanese. They're so happy to learn this new language and learn this preschooler's alphabet song. And give them all their food. And give them all their food. (laughs) Oh, wow. Wow, 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 like, that's not when, okay. When the movie jumped over to the whole, like, Britain colonizing the islands thing, I'm like, wait, this seems a little too self-aware. But then they, like, turned it around on its head and they're like, that's why this is okay for Japan to do it, because we are freeing these islands from, from all those evil white people. Yeah. They they specifically use the term white people. Well, at least the translations do. So Mm -hmm. that's what we have to assume. Because, yeah, yeah, they never name who, quote unquote, the enemy is. They just call, like, all the allies either white people or the enemy. Yeah. Yeah, that is one thing. They never specifically say Americans or British or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But that being said, when we actually finally meet... The enemy at the end, it's noodly armed Americans. Or British people, I'm I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's it Americans. It kind of felt like a, a wombo combo of stereotypes. Yeah. it. I think it's supposed to be just the allies. Yeah. Uh, in because I think that would have been at least fairly common for allies to have intermingled. Yeah, I would say so. Probably. Though I would almost say that the British were probably too preoccupied with everything going on in Europe to right. really be able to help a whole lot in uh, the Pacific. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like, hey, I mean, knows? I'm sure they were down there somewhat, but but yeah, at least the the caricatures portrayed in this film um, seemed more British to me. Yeah. But that, that doesn't necessarily mean, mean that they that's... They British people. Yeah, that that's what they intended. Because they it could have just, intended to be American mm-hmm. stereotypes, but I we mean, just don't I, know. I definitely think they did the weird noodly arm stuff mm-hmm. as stereotyping America and Britain just because that was our style of animation at the time that they were poking fun at because... It could be. Because Japan is only shown as... Loving, hardworking children. Mostly, yeah, actually. Yeah, work. Japan is cute even and Momotaro kawaii. Is, Momotaro is, is a, a child. child. Yeah. Everyone in this movie is a child, and they go in and they defeat the, the, the adult, uh, adult, noodle arm, noodly armed. Amera British. You know, I didn't think the movie was gonna step into that, like actually show any war. I yeah, thought it was gonna like sugarcoat the whole it thing. It was so like this is all cutesy and stuff, but no, it actually gets into the war. You never mm-hmm. actually see anyone die, but you do see the main characters angrily stabbing towards the camera oh, no. <laughs> and uh, shooting fleeing soldiers and like. Uh, you just oh, threw just grenades w- into that bunker. Those people are dead. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. But it's all for the glory of Japan, so it's fine. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Propaganda is difficult to watch. And difficult to talk about. Yeah. Because it's just like, it's easy to say... This is all bad. Yeah, propaganda's bad. But it's hard to, like, articulate it w- without, without being a, like, uh, Obviously, a culture study, his, like, yeah. it's y- like, you know, without having a major in this kind of stuff, it's hard to articulate what's so bad about it. But mm-hmm. it's just, it's very, you watch it and you feel uncomfortable. It's because it's propaganda, propaganda and by nature, it is manipulative as hell. Mm-hmm. Just to go over some of the specifics, uh, we're sh- at the beginning of this movie, we were shown four soldiers yeah. and how they come from four very different backgrounds. Uh, we have a dog character who is just from out in the country. and The farming family- class of yeah, Japan. He's, a fa- he's from the farming class because uh, Japan at this point in time was still very class-based. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also have a bear character who's obviously from the high class 
family, like a high class family. Uh, the monkey, who's kind of the main character, uh, is from an orphanage. It seems like. Yeah, that was definitely what I was picking up. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a, a pheasant. I'm pretty some sort of Japanese bird pheasant. I don't know if it's specifically a pheasant, but um, and he's obviously a young father. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just, like, so manipulative in that fashion. It's like anyone can go and serve in the army and do great things. It doesn't matter what your background is, is essentially what it's saying. It's like, uh, you know, nowadays, real. Like, what, what, I, I want to say real propaganda for joining the army, but it's like, no, this was real. All right. of this is real. Right. It's well, just propaganda still does this today. Yeah, I mean, of how many how many the army. US army ads have we seen that's just glorifying the army and like you yeah. can do this to do that other thing. No matter where you come from. Mhm. And um, it's like the, the army is made of poor people. Yeah. It's like I don't know if you guys realize this, but people <laughs> join the army because they're poor. I mean, a lot of cases, the but vast majority when asked that's oh people... yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at like just American studies, yeah, people have started to criticize how heavily the army is uh, targets high school poor kid, like poor high oh, school students. Oh yeah, saying like because you like, join they the don't army have and you can go, go off to do college. Right. Totally, you can go do college if you join the army. No, you can't. Totally wink. Anyway. Uh, that's that's let's get back to Momotaro. <laughs> but just showing everything in this high, nice light. Like, oh yeah, and they show like these characters, you know, polishing save. guns. Well, okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> the, the less the less on the nose imagery here, mm -hmm. but like more of the manipulation where it's like they're showing them doing all these like helping. Wow, people they saved an orphan and who had fallen into the river and. Showing how great the army is and stuff, and mm -hmm. then them just all sitting around in the plane eating bento boxes. Oh yeah, right yeah. Right before they, they uh, they make they, they make the army look like oh wow look everybody's friends and great yeah and, and everyone's you know is really kind and respectful to you. Oh yeah, I totally believe it. <laughs> yes, totally. I believe that they're feeding bento boxes to the army. Oh, in chocolate bar. <laughs> oh, in chocolate. Yes. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe someone down in the comments will be like, actually, <laughs> but I, I doubt it this time. <laughs> From what I've learned from my Japanese studies, mm -hmm. especially by this point in the army, in the war, yeah, Japan was did not bare have the bones. funds. To, they didn't know. Yeah, they were building planes out of literally anything they could get their hands on. Yeah, it, well, because uh, I mean that was the whole point of them being at war is because they had no resources. They had no resources, so they're expanding and stealing from other countries. Right. So it's like. Once you start losing that war, there go your resources. You have nothing. Right. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it's like they start off... Because we haven't really explained what's, what goes on in this movie. Um, other than... I mean, we've explained a lot, a lot of, of points propaganda. of what happens. Just haven't put them in order. Right. Okay, so the movie starts and it's... The, the four, four characters. characters that we talked about before going home on a like a home break visit, visit. Yeah. they're on shore leave. leave essentially and then they save one of the orphans and show how great they are mm -hmm. and then it cuts to oh by the way yes. don't be deceived by the title Momotaro's Divine Sea Warriors this isn't about the navy <laughs> It really. is. It is about the it's Navy. It's about the Navy's airplane division because there wasn't yeah. a term for Air Force yet. Well, but it's like, it's, yeah, it's the people who are flying the planes that are going out on the boats. Yeah. So it's like, yes, it's technically part of the Navy, but not in the way you think it means. It's not about boats at all. It's not about really, the planes. No. Which had me a little confused, because I was like, wait, but they all just keep stepping out of airplanes. When's the boat's going to come in? And then they took like took off a plane mm -hmm. from a boat. And I was like, oh, okay. Did they? 
I think so. I think there was one time where they took off. I don't think there was a single a boat in this movie. Well, it was like one of those long runway Yeah, no, boats. I don't think there was. Really? I think everything was just on land mm. on that island. And then they flew to a different part of that island or a different island. I'm not sure. Possibly. But anyway, way. after they are done with their leave, it cuts to uh, all the... Well, like, Sean and I were kind of confused because they were showing... All, all the these... all the characters in this are anthropomorphic... Um, animals. Animals, for except the most for part. Momotaro and the British-American yeah, er, ally It's like there's a couple of humans in this, <laughs> mm-hmm. but pretty much everything else is animals, whether they be anthropomorphic animals or just actual animals right. like elephants and rhinos and squirrels yeah. they're animals but most everything else is a little more anthropomorphized but it's like we're watching all of these not Japanese animals right. do like all this manual labor in the jungle and leopards and elephants and rhinos and, rhinos and squirrels Squirrels. For some reason. Deer. Well, Japanese do have deer. Monkeys. Not monk. Not Japanese monkeys. Yeah. Obviously, not Japanese monkeys. We're like, what is going on here? Yeah, it's like they're they're cutting down these trees and they're singing this happy little working song. And then about as, how great it is to work. And then the army flies in, and you realize, oh, these are all the subjugated people. Try. And Japan is just showing this in a light that they're happy to be working for the great motherland of Japan. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, boy, howdy. Here we go. Uh, And And then they spend a good, like, ten minutes singing singing the Japanese alphabet. Over and over and over again. Yeah. As they're learning the language, because that's what you do with subjugated... uh, peoples mm-hmm. you and teach they're them so your... excited to learn the language too as they do all of their work and mm-hmm. stuff and build their military bases build their military bases and give them all these giving away their food and there's like this one japanese flight captain who is like a bird mm-hmm. and i was like what? And Sean Sean pieced it together. He's like, look, I got this from a different island. Look how cute this animal is that I stole from another country. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Or who knows, maybe it was just a normal bird from Japan somewhere as a keepsake. I don't know. It never explains, and I don't know enough about birds. Right. I, I think you were on the nose, though. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, spoils of war right. thing. Uh, but then, like, the, the rest of the movie is a lot of, you know... Oh, no, they're attacking, so we need to... Well, we're going to go defeat them, and then they catch the British-American army completely unawares and noodly armed people running away. And Oh, yeah, and of course, like, they're completely incompetent. It's just like, oh, yes, um, um, But um, did you notice that, um... So when they actually show up, they are speaking English. Yeah. So obviously they either had Japanese people learn English, which is most likely what happened. Uh Uh-huh. But they were playing the roles of these Brit-Americans. And at one point, the one guy leans over to the other guy and is like, we're already winning the war. We just need to stall for a little bit more. Yeah. It's like, uh, does this movie, is this movie that self-aware realizing that they are losing already? Yeah, that was like a really weirdly Weird truthful moment And there. the thing is, it was spoken in English, so we didn't need subtitles to tell us that. So we know for a fact the original movie said those exact words. It wasn't just like a translation thing later. Yeah, no. No, because it was like it was like the English people were were talking amongst like like they would speak English to uh, Momotaro and mm-hmm. then they were like whispering to each other. Yeah. That it was just like, oh we we're already winning the war, we just need to stall for a little bit. And then they'd go back to talking to Momotaro and they'd be like, um uh oh oh we're so incompetent and I'm just I'm a little confused. Yeah, it's like, are they actually incompetent or not? But ultimately, they just surrender. Yeah. Which is weird. I I don't know. 
It is a very it's propaganda. weird propaganda. I'm not going to question it. Yeah. Other than I'm confused by it, how your... self-aware the movie seems to be. Yeah. So, yeah. That was Momotaro's Divine Sea Warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, would I recommend seeing this film? If you're a diehard anime fan and you must know the origins of all anime, watch this, I guess. If you're a diehard World, World War, War II, II person and you want to see all the crazy, insane propaganda from all sides of the war, sure. Yeah. Um, past that, I don't know. I... <sighs> it's certainly better animated than a lot of other first animated films. That the monkey's face is oh, really yeah. creepy. That's something we never mentioned, but the monkey main character keeps getting lips half the time, and it's really disconcerting. Well, and they'll do, like, close-ups of his, as, of his face, as and he'll, he like, As he looks squint, into the distance and stuff. And, and like, it's just like, Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> It looks fine on the child character, but when it's the monkey, it's just, like, getting into the weird uncanny valley, and I don't like any of this. No. And he's the only character that does this. All the other characters are fine. Yeah, but they never zoom in on the other characters. It's always the monkey. Yeah, it's always the monkey, and half the time he has lips, and he's just doing this, like, half the time weird squinting, wistful thing. It's where his mouth is, like, half, half open, open like, and, like, all his teeth are drawn, and you're just like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, that's... A little disconcerting. Um, yeah, I probably would not recommend this one. Probably what you see up here is while we show is probably more than enough for most people. But if you really want to go find it, it's easily found. Yeah, because it's surprisingly longer than what you would think. Yeah, it's an hour and 14 or 15 minutes long. Yeah. It's a full-length film. Yeah, it's like when we first sat down to watch this, we were thinking like, oh, well, we'll get through this in no time. This is probably like a 40, 50 minute film. No problem. No. Nope. We look it up and it's like, oh, no, that's a little longer than we thought. No, they went all out on this. And yeah. uh, there was like next to no repeating animation in this. There was one time where it's like they had a shot of, of the monkey kid's hat fallen down the stream, a little waterfall, and, and then in the immediately background flipped. flipped the <laughs> shot so that they could show it falling down another little waterfall, and I'm like... Yeah, that was a little hey, funny. Hey, plus, guys. <laughs> good good job reusing those assets. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, the animation was alright. The In general, like... It was fine. Yeah, it's like good good artistry all around just you know <laughs> the subject matter <laughs> look, is look a little look at the subject mm-hmm. matter that's mm, not not so great but uh i think that pretty much covers yeah it. so what do we have up next then so the next film we are looking at is another first for a country we're going to spain this time espanol yeah and we have the Gar- garbanchito of la mancha is that like a Man in La Man- Man of La Mancha spinoff? I am not sure, so... I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I mean, so far a lot of these first films have been based <laughs> on folklore, fairy tale, or that kind of thing, so I'm guessing this will or be Or propaganda. Similar. Yeah, or propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, should be interesting. See you guys next time. Uh, after all, I vote, I vote as the commander of all troops, uh, now, if the governor were here, it would help matters a great deal. Let's go. 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 Let's go.